The Sable Knight, an epic, by Joshua Lawrence Marvel, read by Garrett Grove. 4. The Sable Knight and the Weeping Youth Throughout harsher lands still, the Sable Knight traveled with heart of courage, his stomach air without its fill. Then happened he upon a young youth with water in the eyes, and youthful face devoid of any fun. Curious as to the youth's predicament, he dismounted and knelt to his level, and proceeded to comment. Youth, thine eyes flow as though at the beginning of a river, filled with sorrow. Why dost thou cry? Why hath thou chest filled the brim with sorrow that prevents ye from glancing at the sky? The weeping youth spake, with great emotion in his poor voice, and so to story none could fake. O sable noble knight, thy kindness is welcome, and shall comfort me through the night. Many a year ago, my hamlet cheerful and hospitable was attacked with fury and lust for bloodlet, and convinced my sweet mother, with the courage of a lioness that protects her cub from any wicked bother, took me in her grasp, and carried me far into desert, until breath could only be taken in gasp. Hunted we did, hares and other vermin, built a cottage to live, far from the land of evil men. The meat we lay upon salt, and preserved the flesh, for many years with ne'er a fault. Alas, so fateful day, that thou cometh so suddenly, and kill without say. A man arrived, foul in look, his brawn hath the authority, and anything he saw he took. My mother he defiled and humiliated, with our meat he committed theft, his thirst and desire could not be abated. We didn't eat for days thrice, our tongues melting and stomachs in vice, until my life-giver, God rest her soul, gave up her body for a common sinner as food. Oh, cursed mouth! <laughs> that ate and found it good. My life is shambles. Thy heart has turned from me, rather than risk my sin in gambles, that hath no place on this earth, and cause me in desperation to devour the woman whom my life gave birth. <laughs> so leave me to cry with bloody teeth and hands, O oh, leave me to die. With last solemn word, and to himself scorn and confession so mighty, he returned to mourn. The sable knight spaketh, Thy sin is great, but thy tragedy knoweth no bounds, and harrow and sorrow, and surpass my own grounds. Whether I should slay thee, you youth of hellish deeds, or save thou with Christ's decree of grace and forgiveness. And so I mourn with thee, and there shall this horrid tale go into forgetfulness. And that noble sable knight's eyes, weakened in sorrow and anger, gave in to fits and cries and held the tragic youth in his hands, refusing to let him die, and carried him out of the sands and snow. On the destrier he sat, the sable knight behind, who fed him holy food till he was fat, and continued upon his journey with youth, with no rival to his tragic story, then delivered him unto a family full of love, with the warmth to undo the crimes of his youth, and find forgiveness and heal his sinful tooth. The sable knight's spirit was shaken, his tragedy now not so tragic, his sorrow almost forsaken. But lo, his rage returned, that through the works of Lucifer, even the innocence of youth was spurned. And so, with determined dedication, he moved forward to grant the dragon death in his love salvation. <laughs>